the entire COVID-19 situation has caused a paradigm shift in every business activity. And uh, technology becomes the touchstone and cornerstone of all the changes that are going to be. Uh, uh, the time has come when we must understand and imbibe technology into different sorts of activity. And it's not, it's across the board. It's not about technology being at variance with what business and industry is there, but actually to see how under these circumstances we are able to adapt to the new situation and leapfrog into a, a position wherein we are able to cope up and better our situation as early as possible in order to bring the economy back to track. So we have a, two different stories. The first story, which the Prime Minister Narendra Modi recounted, and he talked about Jan Hai to Jahan Hai, which meant that if you have life, then you can think of livelihood. So the focus was on a total lockdown situation wherein we were required to remain in our residences, close transportation, close our offices, close our business, close our industry and remain in the home. Except for certain essential commodities which were required to be given and to set up hospitals and situations emergency to get more beds, to get more ventilators and to see that the society gets to adapt masks which again had to be produced in the shortest period of time in order to meet the market. Last but not the least, a technology upliftment in order to see that the production of vaccine would be taken up in right earnest besides the other medicines in order to make it as early as possible. This was a different story simply because vaccines normally take two or three years even when they are speeded up to produce. But this time, looking at the pace of the pandemic, it was required to be and all different regulatory bodies expedited the process of moving from the first to the second to the third phase of emergency trials. What became extremely important to each and every individual? His internet connectivity, his mobile, his entire contact possibility virtually like we are doing here today. So we learned and everybody learned what was the Zoom, what was the Google Meet, what was the Microsoft Teams and different sorts of connectivity. All these made a world of a change that we sitting in our homes or in isolated locations were able to communicate with the rest of the world and things could go on in a different sort of way. The second part of it was what was happening in individual businesses and industries. Let's take the education world. People had thought of and were conducting certain amount of online courses which were known all over the world. Coursera and similar other online courses were existing. However, very, very few people ever utilized that in the course of education. Today, whether it is from the first standard of school or to it PhD students and research scholars, all of them are using the virtual platform, which meant a paradigm change in terms of education. Both the learners, both the teachers, all of them had to get into and incorporate the new educational platforms in order to make this change happen. And today what has happened? We find even in India, education is done on the virtual platforms. Examinations are today being conducted on the virtual platforms and continuous education is possible in order to beat the challenges of the time. These learning platforms have various other names. Coursera is followed by Skillshare, by Masterclass, FutureLearn, Moodle and all sorts of things. Academics and people have to have ERP solutions for admission, website creation, teaching and other extracurricular activity. I mentioned in terms of education, 
but it became applicable across the board in all businesses and industry. And every business and industry had to incorporate the use of technology. Banking and other systems also were already online, but today it took it to the other extreme, where hardly any transactions could be done on the physical nature. Everything and all communications and transfers were taking place on the online platform. E-commerce had a big boom. Shops were not open. All the other places of shopping and other interests, including uh, including essential items, were closed down. But they were all delivered on the e-platform, and this became a new idea that online shopping really reached its zenith. So all this became extremely important. What was it that the result was? That we were able to bring back a large amount of the economy even during the lockdown period. And this is actually an amazing story that the entire tech platform enabled us to come back into a situation where the economy has come back. Slowly, as unlocking is taking place, various industries, manufacturing and others have also come back to life. Construction is coming back, migrant workers are coming back to their sites, but all this has still continued to say that the online platform, the internet platform, all the digital platform are definitely going to remain as a permanent revolution which has taken place in the technology field. One of the other things which became extremely important was data. Data, data centers were required to be expanded in order to meet these new contingencies. We at Toyota took up this challenge in a very big way, putting up Asia's largest data center, a tier four data center, and also one uh, the second largest in the entire world. This enable, enable the entire Indian network to have the data localized, which is the prime minister's desire, and also to be the issues of data security so that we do not have to offshore our data to other countries. In fact, can we actually see to it that data which is otherwise stored overseas can come to India even if the transactions have taken place abroad? This is a possibility which is going to happen and we are really proud to say that the technology feat in India is tremendous and I believe that these changes are going to take place rapidly wherein data localization will become a state which will be required by law, which will be required by necessity, certainly to the security of India. The last and final thing that I'd like to share with you is the fact that we are now going to accept the new change. The new change which has taken place has to be technology driven. And it is up to us in the technology field to actually empower the speed of change to take place. Provide easy, ultimate solutions for the consumer, for the economy, for the government, for polity, for businesses, for transactions, and also to meet the social needs of the deprived. Today, for example, can we get this education platform not only for the the top rated schools and colleges in the cities uh, or metropolitan cities. But can we now outreach these people to the poorest or poor section in the remotest villages? It's easy and possible. So all these things which will now drive the situation is creating technology platforms to achieve the social purposes. The Prime Minister has already done opening bank accounts wherein direct money transfers do take place where government is interested to reach the needs of the socially deprived the farming community the other backward sections of the economy all these things can now happen on the touch of a button a click of a switch and this is the change which we are going to see in the next decade so technology has to learn how can it be useful how can it be user-friendly? 
how can it be easy for us to imbibe these changes which are taking place in order to create a real world which is virtual but becomes useful for the people who are operating it. So today, once we meet the challenges, the leadership which Indians have taken in, as CEOs of so many of the American giants and also IT professionals all over the world are Indians. Can we in the technology platform also do the same in India in order to make the paradigm happen? Meet the challenges of the COVID situation, meet the challenges for the new world and the problems of tomorrow to bring solutions which are going to be socially beneficial to one and all. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.